Hello my friends, welcome to the metal shop. Today we are doing follow up to the OBD1 code reader, the Innova code reader for the Mustang. So if you remember, you're gonna have to watch part one if you haven't seen it already. Um, we found several codes when we scanned the OBD1 here with our uh, Innova code reader. And if you remember, the ones I was most concerned with was 22C, that was in continuous memory, and that was the MAP sensor or the BARO sensor, some people call it a BAP sensor, the barometric absolute pressure sensor was out of range. Um, that is this sensor right back here. I've already swapped it out for the new one, and I'll show you the old one here and how this works on an 89 and up Mustang. Um, so right here on an older car, 88 and back car, an older car, this would be hooked, this, a vacuum line would be hooked up to this. Um, and it would be a MAP sensor, your manifold absolute pressure. Because this is a barometric pressure, a BAP sensor, barometric absolute pressure sensor, they give you this little, this little nub, this little standoff so that you won't hook a vacuum line to it. And really all it's reading is the barometric air pressure to help you with your fuel tables. This is the old one. Um, Probably nothing wrong with this since it was stored in continuous memory. All that that means is that this code was thrown at one time and it stored the code. So this thing, who knows? It could have been anything. I'm guessing that this was probably fine. Okay. The other code we had was 95C in continuous memory, which was the fuel pump secondary circuit failure. Now, the car starts and runs perfectly fine. I've never had any issue. And if you had a problem, with your fuel pump secondary circuit, and that is the, uh, the relay that turns your fuel pump on and off, um, the car wouldn't run. Um, this car, the fuel pump relay is underneath the seat. Now I have installed a kill switch in there. A lot of Mustang guys do that as kind of a security measure, a fail safe. Um, I can't show it to you just because it's inaccessible. It's buried deep underneath the seat. I had to remove the seat to put it in, and now you guys all know that I have that in there. <laughs> no big deal, lots of guys put them in. So, if you ever have shut that off and tried to start the car, guess what? You guessed it, it's gonna generate that code, that secondary circuit failure. So I believe that's all that was. So my point is, what we're, what we're doing is we're, we're fixing all the codes that were thrown, we're making the necessary repairs before we go any further. Now I also had, Let's see, I had RPM code, if you remember, that I have the RPM turned up on this at idle, a secondary computer. Air diverter solenoid, I've removed the smog pump, that's not a big deal. Thermactor fault, again, that's part of the smog pump system that's been removed, no big deal. Number eight, code number 18, the tachometer spout, um, it showed a circuit failure there. You guys know, in the Mustangs, into Mustangs, you know, this is the spout here. And what you do is, basically, by removing this little gray connector here, you take that off when you're setting timing and it won't allow the computer to advance it when you're setting base timing. Now, what I found when I took that spout connector, and it was in place, it was not missing. What I found when I took that spout connector off, one of the terminals was very corroded. It had that you know, nasty uh, green white corrosion on it that you sometimes you see on a battery terminal. So what I did was with a pick tool, with a flat bladed screwdriver, I scraped off that corrosion. I sprayed in some, you know, some circuit cleaner lubricant. You know, I plugged the spout in and out, in and out. I cleaned it super good. I believe that's probably all the issue was, is that it wasn't getting a good connection. Now, this was probably the code that was making, was causing my check engine light to go off while I was driving because it would, couldn't advance timing past 15 degrees if it's not getting a reading from the spout connector. And all this thing does is there's two wires that come in here. All the spout connector does is it connects those two wires. So if you ever had a failure, you could, you could wire in a jumper. You could even cut those wires and splice them together with a switch. You know, there's lots of different fixes that you could do there. So I'm gonna give a, a, a brief pause here and we're gonna go over the uh, how to of resetting the codes, of clearing all the codes, now that I've made all of the necessary repairs. So let's stand by. All right, so we're going to erase the codes and it's, it's the steps are pretty simple. 
I want to mention that, you know, if you don't have a code reader and you use a little wire jumper or a paper clip and then to get your codes and you don't have a code reader, you can disconnect the battery. If you disconnect the battery, for, you know, and just leave it disconnected for 15 or 20 seconds, hook it back up, it will erase all the codes in continuous memory. So to erase codes, it's really pretty simple. It's the procedures are, the steps are nearly the same as just doing the key on engine off test. So with this plugged in and off, we're going to turn the key on, okay? We're gonna turn this on, got the zeros. We're going to start the key on engine off, test, just like we would do that test. We're gonna push this to, do, to start the test. And you'll hear, ran the fuel pump, that's working fine. You hear some solenoids and some stuff clicking under the engine department. The one different thing that we're going to do there, once we start reading codes, we're gonna put the test on hold, just like that. Once you see the square start um, blinking, that's like your check engine light is blinking along with it, we're gonna push that test hold, and now that will wipe out all of your codes. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause again, I'm gonna unplug everything, I'm gonna take this for a drive, and then I'm gonna perform both the key on engine off and key on engine running tests, and hopefully we are showing no codes other than those that we've already discussed that uh, I'm not concerned about. So cool, let's, uh, let's go for a drive. All right, so it's much, much later. You can probably tell by the light. Um, I did go for a long drive, like uh, almost 50 miles actually. I ended up you know, hunting for a 30 millimeter socket for uh, doing a fluid change in the uh, differential in the Jeep YJ, another project there. So I did clear all the codes. Like I said, I went for a drive, rechecked everything, key on, key off, key on engine running, and uh, all the cleared codes are gone, thankfully. It did pop up a new code, which is kind of cute, a 67 and key on engine off, which is the clutch cancel switch circuit failure. But, you know, the thing only starts with a clutch pushed in, so, that, you know, it's still working. Same thing with that fuel pump code. Thing runs and drives it's not it's not an exact science I guess is is what I'm saying you know it throws a new code out of nowhere you get rid of the old ones um, it did I will say this you know having when I cleared the codes when I first went for a drive it did not run very well right off the bat um, once I went for a little drive cycle and warmed it up it uh, made you know quite a bit of difference I think when you clear the codes it's the same as uh, disconnecting the battery and it wipes out everything that's all the memory that's in your ECM, you know, your, your little bit, your fine tuning, your, your adjustment that the computer's making. Um, so it has to kind of relearn that. That's, I believe that that's the case. Um, so I hope this uh, helps you guys out there. Um, if you're trying to diagnose your Fox body Mustang or your OBD1 car, uh, not that difficult. Um, oh, most importantly, the check engine light did not come back on. So quite honestly, I don't care about the rest of these codes. If they don't throw a check engine light and they're not affecting the running, driving, you know, the drivability of the car, then, you know, you'll never even notice. Who really cares? Um, <laughs> anyway, as always, my friends, I appreciate uh, your support. Thank you for watching. Lots more to come. And please uh, consider subscribing. Give me a like. Give me a share if you are so inclined. All right, my friends. Take care. Bye-bye.